Today we're going to be talking about the Sabata handgun, which has recently been changed as of Season 4 in Deep Rock Galactic. This is Driller's first secondary weapon that's available to you at the very start, and it's been a weapon that a lot of people have liked to have changed for quite a while. So we're going to be going over some builds for this. These are going to be specifically non-overclocked builds with non-overclocked primaries, and these builds are going to be more focused towards brand new players just getting into Deep Rock or just getting back into Deep Rock and don't currently have any overclocks. We will be talking about overclocks at a different time uh, and going over builds for each one of these. For this, I'm going to be using Carl.gg, which is a fantastic website. This is a website that I and a lot of other content creators use and a lot of people just use in general to check out stats of the weapons, as well as you can see potential DPS, whatever your weak spot damage is, the potential total damage that you have that you hit with every bullet. So first up, let's go over the tiers and what the options are and why you might want to take one or the other. And uh, first up, I'm going to be building towards my flamethrower, although I will have a build for each one of these. There will be footage in the background too. This is all played on Has5, so uh, if it works just fine on Has5, it should work on any difficulty. <laughs> so first up in tier one, we have two options. We have improved alignment. This lowers base spread to zero, so your first shot from the gun is extremely accurate. It's gonna go exactly where the reticle actually is on the screen. That is pretty useful, especially if you want to try to pick off things at a distance, because even though the Sabata doesn't do really high damage, it can do enough to pick off things like web spitters, and it can do enough to get a good headshot in on something like an acid spitter. High capacity magazines, this just raises your magazine size to 16, from 12 to 16. This is the one that I usually pick, just because the Sabata is already accurate enough, and a lot of the time I'm just going to be kind of spam firing this at whatever I see at a distance or if something's on fire at very close range. So just having more bullets in the gun helps me out quite a bit. In tier two, we have two options, expanded ammo bags to get us 48 more ammo, or we have improved propellant, which gives us three more damage. Going up to 15 damage is a little bit useful with the Sabata because 15 damage is a nice break point. It's just enough to one shot swarmers on any difficulty. That may or may not be an issue for you as Driller, probably not, since all of your primary weapons destroy Swarmers. So in this tier, pick whichever one you would like. Usually, at least for the Flamethrower, I'll go with more ammo, and that's because of our Tier 5, which we'll talk about once we get down to there. In Tier 3, we have three options, Recoil Compensator to reduce spread and recoil. That's pretty nice. Although, again, I don't find that the Sabata has a whole ton of recoil. This one is particularly useful with the automatic uh, overclock, but... Again, we're not going to be talking about that right now. The new two round burst feature, which now makes it so whenever you fire your gun, you're firing out two shots with every one shot. And if you hit with the second bullet, it gets 350% armor breaking on it. That is pretty interesting, although not entirely necessary with our flamethrower build, but it is a nice uh, quality of life choice if you would like to go with it for hitting things like Praetorians. So it's not bad by any means. And then our final tier three is quick fire ejector, which is faster reload speed. Usually I'll go with this one for the flamethrower build just because I don't really need two round bursts and I don't find that the spot is super inaccurate or difficult to control so the recoil compensator I don't really find necessary but any of these are good pick whichever one you would like. Then in tier 4 we have hollow point bullets this gets us 75% more weak spot damage the Sabata already has 25% bonus weak spot damage on it which is kind of nice whenever you hit something in a weak spot you'll be getting a little bit of extra damage. You could go with high velocity rounds, this is the same as the improved propellant in tier 2, so 3 more damage. And we have expanded ammo bags, which is also the same as in tier 2. Usually I'll go with the hollow point rounds for the flamethrower build because I'm trying to hit things in the weak spot, again because of the tier 5 that I pick. This one is a pretty nice one for getting extra damage, and it can be really useful for picking off things like web spitters, or acid spitters at a distance, or even just applying some more damage to things like Mactera that may also be off in the distance. And then in tier 5 we have three options with volatile bullets, this gets us 50% more damage to burning enemies, as well as this extends the burning duration so things will take even more damage from it. This is kind of the obvious one to pick if you're using the flamethrower, don't pick it if you're using the cryo cannon because you're going to have to rely on somebody else to light things on fire, and don't take it if you plan on using the sludge pump because again you're going to have to rely on somebody else for lighting that on fire. This one is specifically made for the flamethrower and it is a very good choice for the flamethrower because once you light something big on fire whether that be a Praetorian or a Presser you just circle around it and just keep shooting it in the back and you will kill it fairly quickly. You can also throw in power attacks to this or throwing axes or frag grenades whatever you're running with driller your saw blades whatever it might be. Uh, you'll get some extra damage on top of your already existing pretty decent damage. Our other options in tier 5 though are pretty interesting too. Blow through rounds is not a bad option if you'd like to take it since you'll just get more value generally or 
the Sabato will remain the same. That's the worst case scenario. So blow through rounds is a very welcomed addition to the new Sabata. And then our last one is the Neuro Corrosive Toxic Catalyst, which as you can see has a lot more text than everything else. Basically, once an enemy is afflicted by a sludge pump or neurotoxin, whether that be yours or a teammate's, doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter if this is from the grenade or if this is from the sludge pump or if this is from another overclock like neurotoxin payload. This makes it so if you kill the target after shooting it with the Sabata or kill it with the Sabata within a certain amount of time, the enemy will pop deal damage to everything around it. That's pretty useful too for crowd control, but this one is specifically made for the corrosive sludge pump. You can get it to work just with neurotoxin grenades, but you only have four of them, so it's not a very reliable way to get this going. You generally want to be using the sludge pump. If you have teammates, that's a little bit different, because if you have a gunner teammate and you know that they're running neurotoxin payload, you can take this one if you would like, and it will still work just fine. But this is the general build that I run with the flamethrower. I take a lot of ammo, and I take extra weak spot damage, as well as more volatile bullet damage. This is so once I do light something on fire, I can continually shoot it in the weak spot, dealing extra damage just from the Sabata, and extending the burn duration so I get a little bit more value. This is mostly going to be useful for very big things like Praetorians and Oppressors, like I mentioned before. This doesn't work well at all against Dreadnoughts, because you can't light them on fire, so... Probably don't take this build if you're looking for a Sabata build for that. You could also just go with even more ammo if you'd like and just use this with a flamethrower. One advantage of taking hollow point rounds is that it's also pretty good for picking off things at a distance. This is going to function like a very basic handgun. Good range, a decent rate of fire if you're okay with clicking fairly quick, and it should serve you well in almost every type of mission besides the Dreadnought missions. And since we're here on Carl.gg, I'm going to go over the flamethrower build that I typically run with this, or a flamethrower build that I sometimes run with this. This was more for robots, so I usually go with reach, fire, extra ammo, extra ammo, and heat radiance. This is just to light robots on fire faster, and this was specifically for an industrial sabotage like you're seeing in the background. If you're not running this one, this build can still be really good, and I do like taking this for like egg missions or escort missions or whatever it might be just for lighting regular enemies on fire. Another option could be switching out the tier one and tier two for increased tank size and for extra fuel damage. That's pretty good too, that way you're dealing more damage. This is a very straightforward flamethrower build. You just hold fire on anything until it's dead or until you've lit it on fire and then you switch over to your Sabata and just keep shooting it so the volatile bullets stack up some damage. This build is pretty basic, both of the flamethrower and the Sabata, but it is pretty effective on most missions, again, outside of Dreadnought missions. That's about the one mission that this one will struggle with. The Cryo Cannon build is a bit interesting because both of our Tier 5 options don't really help the Cryo Cannon. You, again, can't really apply Corrosive with the Cryo Cannon, and you can't really apply Fire with the Cryo Cannon. So that kind of leaves us with Blow Through Rounds as our only option in Tier 5, which is still a really good option. Now in tier 1, it's your choice, take whichever of these you'd like, I usually prefer the larger mag size, but the increased accuracy can be pretty useful too. And in tier 2, I do like going with damage for this, this is just to break things faster once they're already frozen, you can just shoot them and deal a little bit more damage. The 2 round burst is actually really useful when things are being frozen, that way you can do a little bit more damage to them. And then in tier 4, I also like going with more damage. A straight 2 build for the cryo cannon is actually pretty useful. Getting enough damage like this helps you burst through larger enemies on has 4 and 5, if you wish to go up to that one. You could of course switch this out for ammo, and I have switched off the 2 round burst before for just faster reload speed. This is fairly flexible. One thing that might seem like a decent option, but honestly isn't for this, is the hollow point bullets. It's not a bad option by any means, if you just want to be using this for long range once again, like we talked about with the flamethrower. But if you want to be using this just for frozen enemies, it's not nearly as useful, just because frozen enemies take bonus damage no matter where you hit them. You don't need to hit them in the weak spot to do extra damage, just hit them anywhere. Same thing goes with even big targets like Dreadnoughts. Usually they have the big weak spot that you have to hit. Once they're frozen, that's not a factor. You can just hit them wherever, which is also why like Cryo Driller with axes is really strong in a Dreadnought mission. And if you do want a Dreadnought build, this is a pretty decent Dreadnought killing build too. Now, my general build for the Cryo Cannon doesn't really change that much depending on what mission I'm taking it on, at least if I'm just taking the basic Cryo Cannon. This is usually extra cooling in Tier 1, although the faster turbine is also really fun in Tier 1. I like that one a lot just because it's so quick. In tier 2, I like going with the longer reach, but extra ammo is also pretty good if you find yourself running through ammo 
fast. I like the extra reach because you can then just clear up Mag Terra really easy. In tier 3 I usually go with the flow rate just so that we get a little bit more DPS and we can freeze things a little bit faster. Tier 4 the more ammo just so that we have a lot more ammo. And then in tier 5 Cold Radiance because it is probably one of the best mods in the entire game. It is really strong, it just lets you freeze everything that gets near you. It's similar to Heat Radiance with the flamethrower. Everything within 5 meters of you in every direction can be frozen if they stand next to you long enough while you're spraying the cryo cannon. Really useful. You could go with Fragile too if you'd like. Fragile's not a bad option, it's just Cold Radiance is so good. Uh, especially, again, if you like playing the cryo driller and you really want to use your barb drills. I guess I can go over a drill build too, which is basically everything on the left hand side. That is a uh, cryo driller to kill things faster. You could take something like bloody cold drills too. I don't think it's necessary. But uh, you could take that if you just never want your drills to overheat because they'll actually cool down faster than they build up heat so long as you're hitting enemies with them. So that's kind of cool. And then finally, we got to talk about the sludge pump. And the sludge pump, again, kind of has an obvious one in tier 5. This is the Neuro Catalyst. Although I have had pretty good success with the blow through rounds with the sludge pump as well because a lot of times there's multiple enemies coming in, the sludge is slowing them down, and I can easily just line enemies up and shoot right through them. So either one of those is good, but the Neuro Catalyst is more made for them and it's also just pretty fun to watch enemies pop because you can pop any size of enemy it doesn't matter what kind it is you can even pop like some of the unique enemies like uh, detonators they'll just pop too it's pretty interesting so in tier one once again it's your choice take the base spread or take the magazine size there's not a wrong choice to be made for this in tier two once again your call if you want more damage at range you could take damage here if you want more ammo you can take that both are really good options here just solely depends on what you want Tier 3, once again, kind of your choice. Usually I go with reload speed here, but two round burst I've had pretty good success with. And then in tier 4, again, kind of your choice. Usually I've just been taking the high velocity rounds here, just so that I go up to 15 damage and have a little bit more consistent damage when I'm firing at things from a distance. But you could also go with hollow point rounds just to do a little bit more damage to weak spots of enemies like web and acid spitters. You could also go with extra ammo though here too, and just have a bunch of bullets and then just try to be spamming this at any sort of enemy that gets stuck in your goo or that's affected by it. That's also an option, but a lot of the time I'll just build it something like this. Something pretty basic and nothing too crazy. For my basic sludge pump build, I usually like to go with more AoE for this one so that I can just cover more of an area, have more enemies walking through it, slow them down, and then shoot them with the handgun so that then they pop and deal more damage to everything around them. This build can be pretty ammo efficient. It kind of reminds me of like the thermal shock build that you can run with the flamethrower with the cryo cannon and the microwave gun. Usually I'll go with air sensitive compound to get larger sludge puddles in tier one. Although you could go with the larger magazine size too. I find both of these to be pretty useful. Just depends on what you want to focus on. If you don't want to reload very often, you could take high capacity magazines. If you don't mind reloading more often or if you're running born ready, you may not even need this. In tier two, I'm going with the atomized nozzle. This makes it so we have more charge shot fragments, so it covers potentially more area. But honestly, all of them in tier 2 are really good. Tier 3, I almost always go with the more goo canisters. I just find the extra ammo for the sludge pump too hard to resist over something like the super saturation. Even though this does make it so your goo lasts longer, so if you're okay with kiting enemies around, you can potentially get a little bit more value from this. Then in tier 4, I usually go with the spillback extension. This just makes it so I'm using up one less ammo every time I use a charge shot, which can add up quite a bit as well as a uh, little tip for the sludge pump make sure that you get down to like one ammunition and then you can still use a charge shot and it still counts as full damage that's really good to get extra value from your sludge pump and maybe a reason as to why you may or may not want to take born ready with this and then finally in tier 5 i usually go with the protein disruption this just increases the slowdown of our sludge very useful you throw a bunch of sludge down everything gets slowed even more and then you can still pick them off with your handgun or you can make a little bit of distance and do the same thing. It's also really good if you like combining any of your grenades with this because you just cover a big area. If you see big threats in there, you could throw axes at it. If you see a bunch of enemies, you could throw the saw blades or the grenades in there. And if you just want the most amount of slowdown, then you throw a bunch of goo down and throw down your neurotoxin and it just slows down everything. This is slowly building up damage on everything. And if you have somebody that has fire on your team, it can be really devastating. Oh, another uh, little tip for the sludge pump is that if you light your sludge on fire, it doesn't shorten the duration that it stays on the ground. I get that question a lot when I'm live streaming. And no, it, your sludge stays the same whether it's on fire or not. Fire just gets you some more DPS. So if you can light it on fire, you might as well. 
If you can't, don't worry about it. We will be taking a look at all of the overclocks sometime soon, and I'll be going over builds for each of them, because with the new changes to the Sabata, we do have a lot of interesting builds. If you did enjoy this and you'd like to see some of my other builds, be sure to click over here. There should be a playlist that takes you right to there. Thanks, everybody, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye!